Welcome, welcome, Million Mom Movement community. My name is Stephanie Dawn, and I am the chair of the Million Mom Movement. And I uh, am so proud to sit on a council with uh, so many amazing women who are here with us today. Um, you'll be meeting them shortly. We are a, a council of moms who are deeply committed to the transformation of life as we know it on the planet in terms of our health, in terms of our wealth, in terms of how it is that we are doing life, how it is that we are feeding our children, how it is that we are nurturing and nourishing ourselves. So with all that being said, I wanted to give you just a little bit of the history of Fierce Friday so you understand if you've not been here before, how it is that this came to be. So about a little over a year ago, I um, had, you know, I'd come out of an experience with my own son that uh, had really, well, it was very angering to be honest with you, but I was also very grateful that he had, had that, that he had been healed by a product that we have called Biomedic, which removes glyphosate from the body. Essentially what had happened for me is that my son Zephyr had been poisoned by Cheerios for most of his young life. And you can imagine my horror as a mother that I had been unknowingly doing this to him, right? So it wasn't enough for me to heal my own son's gut. I knew that I needed to raise my voice and speak up so that other mothers and fathers and grandparents and concerned citizens could take action to remove toxic foods and products from their pantries. And with that, Fierce Friday was born. I wanted to gather together the Million Mom Movement community to galvanize us, to raise our voices, to share what we know, to invite our friends, to invite our colleagues, and yes, to move this movement forward and to bring on and enroll brand partners, okay? So this is, the, this is how Fierce Friday began. And at the start, we created a letter writing campaign. Isn't that quaint? <laughs> we started a letter writing campaign to General Mills. And it wasn't long before we switched and uh, created a petition. And I'd love to ask, um, Jody, if you're here, if you'd be willing to put that petition into the chat, I'd really appreciate that. This petition really articulates exactly what we're endeavoring to say to General Mills about what it is that we want. And essentially what it is that we want is we want them to stop farming with glyphosate. That's where we're starting, okay? We've got a lot more to do as the Million Mom Movement community, but this is where we're starting, all right? And we don't think it's too much to ask. They are profiting in the billions annually by selling us and our children toxic food. Because we all know that they market to children as well in television ads and in the grocery stores by putting the cereals really, really low so all the kids can see them, right? So that's a little bit of our history. I wanted you to know that and just just give you, you know, a little bit of um, understanding of the culture of what it is that, uh, that, that we've got going on here with Fierce Friday. So I'd like to now um, uh, bring on my fellow council member, Taz Ferreira in uh, Canada. And Taz is gonna read us the Million Mom Movement Pledge. And every time one of our council members or myself reads this pledge, it recommits myself and all of us to what it is that we're doing here. So please Taz, if you'd be so kind. Do we have Taz with us, ladies? Sorry about that. I shared the wrong screen, but I don't see her. Do you want? Oh, there she is. Yes. There I'm she here. is. Hi, Taz, sweetheart. I'm share my screen. Okay. Jody, are you sharing your screen? Okay, perfect. So I'm so excited to be talking about the pledge and reading the pledge. So this is our new and improved pledge. I feel like this pledge really feels like us. You know, it really feels like us. And 
it feels like this is us as a stronger, better community. Okay, so this is our new pledge, okay? I pledge to defend the health of my family and myself, of myself and my family. I pledge to choose organic foods that are minimally processed and free of man-made ingredients. I pledge to read labels and educate myself on all aspects of clean living. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health and environment of future generations. I am committed to sharing this movement of many. I am Million Mom Movement. So the Million Mom Movement, the M-O-M, this is a movement of many. So I urge all of you to share this pledge, you know, everywhere you go. We are looking to making magnets. Can I say that? To put in our fridge so we can look at this all the time and share it with our family. And, you know, share it on your Instagram, share it on all your social media, because this is what we're all about. Back to you, Jody. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Taz. Now you all know the pledge. You can find that on our website, which is millionmommovement.info. And you can learn a lot more about everything that you're going to hear uh, my fellow council members talking about today. I'd like to turn it over now to Carmela Velarde in um, Pennsylvania. She is an amazing member of our council and she's going to share with you about our scholarships. Thanks, Stephanie. Hey, everyone. So happy to be here with you all this Friday and the scholarships that we have available through the Million Mom Movement are it's just such an empowering opportunity for people in economic with economic need to really uh, bring in this incredible impeccable nutrition into their homes, along with a business opportunity. So we offer four recipients monthly and we want to really encourage and call out the community to take a look on our website look at the scholarship tab. And we have actually refined this scholarship to be $1,250 worth of impeccable superfoods offered over three months time. We have a manual coming, which is a 90 day plan with how you can literally plug into our system, which we as the council are your upline support as well as a diamond sponsor who will be bringing you in. So these recipients will have tremendous support to up-level their, their own economic situation with our Purium business. So you'll have unlimited gift card codes, you'll have the Purium app, you'll have the upline support, the diamond sponsors, you'll have our fierce Friday training, we have a business power hour training, we have a lot to offer these recipients. So we want to make sure that we build a new community, build a new earth with a nutrition, with the empowerment component, and an environmental stewardship comes along with it because we are a sustainable vertical system that is going to take us into the future. So we are family and future forward. Take a look at our scholarships and make a list of people who you know need this business opportunity as well as the nutrition. We want people who will want to bring forth their voice. We're here as a movement of many to empower you to build your voice into your network and community. People don't know what they don't know. This documentarian woman, I'm so excited to hear. I'm so happy the council brings this kind of content to the table for all of you. We're here to educate you and empower and uplift this community. And I think through the scholarships, we find amazing humans come into our company through this. Um, and I see some of them here on the line. So thank you for attending and I will pass the mic over. Great, thank you so much, Carmela. Perium gives and we give really big and the scholarships is one of the ways that we give to our, um, our community that is a very powerful way to not only give them fish, but teach them how to fish, give them the superfoods and teach them how to share superfoods with our support. Thank you so much, Carmela. All right, now we're going all the way to Kauai. Hawaii, aloha sister, mahalo for being here. I was so excited to have just been there recently and I just had the best time. Hi, Naeva, welcome. If you, Naeva, everyone is our, um, she is our social media maven. She runs the Instagram platform uh, as well as our Facebook uh, Million Mile Movement official group, which if you're not in that, she's gonna tell you how to do it. Go for it, Naeva. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Aloha from Kauai, everyone. And yes, it is my honor to be able to share via our social media platforms. And so you can follow us on Facebook at Million Mom Movement. You can also join our Million Mom Movement official group on Facebook, which is where we share uh, recipes. We go live in there. We share business tips and tricks. And we would love to have your voices in there as well. So we want to invite you. If you have not gone live yet with your PHP Live um, current promotion that's happening and you're a little bit shy to go live on your personal page, take it to the Million Mom Movement official and share with us there something that you learn on this Fierce Friday today or on one of our business opportunity calls or maybe one of our inspirational community calls. Just come in there and share some of the tips and takeaways that you've gotten to just break the ice. So it's an open container. We're just going to support you and love you up in there. And then we have our Instagram page, which is at Million Mom Movement. And that's where I mostly repost you. So if you use the hashtag Million Mom Movement or I am the Million Mom Movement, I will find you. And especially if you tag the Million Mom Movement as well. And I will try to repost you into our um, Instagram page as well as into our stories. So that's a really great way for you to be seen by our larger community. And um, it's my honor to be able to share your stories and share what's happening there on our social media platform. So please share your voices, um, you know, by writing what it is that you're passionate about, what our community is doing that is inspiring you. Today's Fierce Friday is going to be really epic. I'm super excited to hear from our guest speaker today. So there'll be lots of great things that you can share about and um, inspire more people to join our movement. So um, please do join our um, Instagram page because that's also where I'll be doing some giveaways. We just recently gave away a family nutrition pack to a mother and we will be doing more giveaways coming soon. So please stay tuned. If you're following that page, then you will get the little notification saying that we have an upcoming giveaway. And it's a really fun way that you can give back to your community by inviting them to participate and possibly win some fun free products. So um, That's a little bit about our social media. And then we also have an incredible petition that we started a little over a year ago. Stephanie mentioned it earlier. And our petition is a really, uh, it's just a way that we can get signatures because we really want to start letting General Mills know and other companies out there that as mothers, as concerned citizens, we want them to stop using ingredients that contain this chemical glyphosate in it. It's really important to us. And I'm sure we're gonna learn a lot more today about this detrimental effects of this chemical on our food, especially on wheat and some of our grains that we eat that is literally in everything. And so um, please sign the petition. I'll go ahead and drop it in the comments here in a second and share this petition with people that you know out there in your community. Inspire them by what you learn here today and use this petition as a way to get them on board with thinking the way that we think with asking these big corporations to remove these chemical ingredients. So thanks so much for having me on. I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of this awesome Fierce Friday. Thank you all for being on. Beautiful, Naiva. Thank you. All right, without further ado, I'd like to interview my friend, my colleague, um, uh, fellow council member, Rebecca Johns, who is uh, the really the woman who spearheaded today's first Friday and reaching out to our guest, Cindy O'Meara, the author and filmmaker of What's With Wheat. So Rebecca, thank you so much for your heart, for your passion, for the way in which you show up to serve um, the, the Million Mom Movement community on, on the whole and how you've been stepping in to really support me as I stepped out to heal my body. So bless you. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much for um, for being with us today and for bringing Cindy to us. Absolutely, my honor, Stephanie. Bless your healing journey, sister. And thank you for the opportunity to rise. And uh, thank all of you for being here today. And I, I'm gonna say a couple of things and we're gonna show a trailer of What's With Wheat and, uh, and then we'll start the interview. Cindy O'Mara is on the line and coming in from Australia. 
and we like to rib each other a little bit about uh, things. So you'll see that she'll go, oh, the million mom movement, because they say mom there. So we're going to have fun today. You're going to learn a lot. You're definitely going to be empowered. And because we are a grassroots organization really committed to raising awareness and empowering you to be educated consumers, you want to take notes. As a matter of fact, there'll be a chance towards the end of the interview today where you'll be able to ask some questions directly of Cindy uh, right through the chat. So um, bear with us before we get to that. You know, the Million Mom Movement is an adjacent organization to Purium Health Products. We run sideline to Purium as an outreach organization. And yes, our job is to build affiliation with Purium Health Products because we stand for those superfoods getting into people and in the world because of the way they are farmed sustainably, honoring the earth and its resources, because of the way they are formulated, honoring the integrity of the ingredients, and because of the way they are even deliv delivered and sold, because they honor the sovereignty of the consumer and the distributor. And it's a symbiotic relationship that happens between Purium and Million Mom Movement and then all of us individuals out in the field. And there's nothing more empowering when you're one of these affiliates out in the field than being able to really stand up and say, look, I'm with these, this group, I'm with this company, I'm with this body of people, this is what we're about, we need to know each other. Okay, and let's go make an impact in the world together. People are literally dying, literally dying to get this information. And so I sat one night at, you know, a thousand o'clock and wanted to binge one of my favorite shows and thought, you know what, I really don't need junk food in my soul right now. Why don't I find something that will honor me? and what I'm about in the world. And I flipped through Amazon Prime and I found this documentary called What's With Wheat. And this 78 minute film put on the big screen what we talk about every day in and out 24-7, 365. And I thought, I have to know them. We, they have to know us. We have to know them. They have to know us. How is it we don't know each other? We're doing the exact same thing. We're literally the everything we need to know each other. So I went on a mad hunt at like three o'clock in the morning, uh, Michigan time, trying to find these people behind what's with wheat. And after a good time on Google and 29 bucks on LinkedIn, I found Cindy O'Mara. <laughs> One day I'll write a book called the $29 email, but for right now, just know this email was precious to me because not only did within 24 hours, did we connect through email and another 24 hours, we were on WhatsApp talking. I'm very clear that this is the birth of a partnership that will expand and grow and have different dimensions and layers. And for those of us who are professional networkers, I can't urge you enough to take a stand and reach out and make connections because there are other people who believe what we believe in this community. And the guest today is one of them. And she's not just someone who believes it. She lives it. She teaches it. She causes it. She's an activist for it. She's a documentarian. She is an author. She is a public speaker. She is a woman on a mission with a husband beside her who are building an empire to cause the world's awakening on exactly the matters we talk about every Friday. So I'd love Rachel Quayle, if you supported us by rolling the trailer, I'm gonna be quiet as hard as that is. I'm gonna be quiet <laughs> and we're gonna play the trailer and then we're gonna talk to Cindy O'Mara. Can you all see my screen? Yes, it's currently blank. When I turned oh. 50, I started. It's blank? No, we see it now. Keep oh. rolling. To gain weight, I got a very sore right hip, lower back pain, and I just wasn't doing very well health-wise. So I went on elimination protocol. I lost all the weight, all my aches and pains disappeared, unbelievable clarity of mind, and I found that the biggest problem of all was wheat. Our wheat has changed dramatically, um, so much so that it doesn't even resemble what 
it used to. We certainly have observed over time a steady increase in the rate of celiac disease and the rate of uh, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Why? It's really interesting to see how many foods are now today being thought of as toxic or is not good for us. You know, for example, we no one's thinking about maybe there's something in the wheat now that there didn't used to be there that's causing this problem. Today they have methods where they start with the wheat and in two hours it's in the plastic bag as a loaf of bread. The wheat that has been developed now was developed for commercial reasons and of course it's laced with chemicals. We gorged ourselves on its availability once we were able to figure out how to grow it limitlessly. Wheat is in everything. It's in everything. Consumer be aware. Do not believe everything we're told. Arthritis, vitiligo, alopecia, thyroiditis. They always find a connection between that autoimmune disease and gluten. If you don't think we're in a crisis, you're not watching, you're not looking, you're not talking to teachers, you're not listening to parents because we have an extreme health crisis in our children today. This is a very uh, difficult time for those who are more concerned about the truth and about what's best for our health versus you know, the powers that be that don't, don't want people to know the truth about wheat. Chemical fertilization leaves your foods and crops deficient in vital minerals, trace elements, micronutrients, because the soil is not getting those nutrients. Glyphosate is the active ingredient in the pervasive herbicide Roundup, which is used uh, in chemical agriculture extensively. We are 10 times more bacteria than we are human cells. Therefore, glyphosate becomes a major issue for us to be real concerned about. Every week, there's something published that adds to our understanding of the importance of these microbes. Imagine how many tens of millions of people are experiencing the same sort of issues and don't really know that it's as a result of food choices, but they assume that it's a natural artifact of getting older. The story of wheat is the story of food. Become educated, become knowledgeable, become aware, start making changes step by step, habit by habit, and we may be able to create a tsunami of change that will change the health of our children and future generations. You just can't continue to douse your food with neurotoxins and not expect it to show up in the human population. My goodness, I am literally moved to tears just with that because I, I know the power of this film, right, as though but no I also know the power of the damage of what is happening. I've had it myself near death. I've had it in my children. So it's time to be upset enough to cause that tsunami of change. It's time to be upset enough to not get wild with rage, but to become convicted. And so I, with great, great honor, introduce um, the founder of her own organization of, of food and impact in Australia, a documentarian. I know, Korea, Karina, I'm crying over here too. We're criers, Cindy, so <laughs> welcome to it. Um, author, we're going to talk about her books, but great and divine human being, Cindy O'Mara, welcome to our stage today. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, and thank you, Stephanie, and everybody else that's been speaking. I I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Sometimes you feel alone. And when you see a group, I've, I've been looking at the amount of people coming online. And when you see a group of people across the country of the US and wherever else you are in the world, uh, it's really exciting. <laughs> it is, Very, right? Uh, it not is. alone. <laughs> uh, right, you're not alone, we're not alone. It was so funny when I reached out to you, you said that you usually, delete any notification from LinkedIn that says you've got something going on and for some reason your finger wouldn't delete this one so I'm grateful that uh you didn't delete <laughs> yeah it's amazing it's amazing LinkedIn I just keep deleting it um but for some reason I read yours so I, and I do believe in the zero point field where there is information out there and slowly but surely everybody is getting that information and um, I'm seeing it more and more. You know, I've been on this bandwagon for 40 years, <laughs> not on glyphosate, but on health, on food and nutrition and, you know, eating well. 
and um, and I'm seeing an exponential amount of people wake up, which is a really cool thing. Well, thank you for being one of the alarm clocks that are out in the world, uh, <laughs> alarm sounding the alarm, as we like to say in Perium and the Million Mom Movement. We are sounding the alarm uh, because it is time to wake up. And your documentary, I want to focus on what's with wheat first, and then I would love to talk about the books. And I'd love for you to, um, you know, Jody I, Jody Parker's on the keys. If you're a council person, would you just drop a C in the chat so that we all can honor and love and know you? But Jody Parker. Um, who's in Colorado is on the keys today, uh, Cindy O'Mara. So if you have anything that you'd like grabbed off the internet, and thrown down as a link or a point of reference, please just say that. Um, but um, why did I just say that? Oh, because Jody, I'd love if you got the links to the books when we mentioned them to drop that too. I would love to drive people to see this film, What's With Wheat, and um, to, to read the books that you've authored as well. 10 times more bacteria than human cells, we hear from an expert in your film. The human body is 10 times more bacteria than human cells. Why does that matter when it comes to this conversation of glyphosate and gluten and big, big ag methods and human health? Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Yeah, we're a flurry of microorganisms from viruses to bacteria. Um, parasites, um, fungi, they're all in our body. And the bad ones are kept at bay and the good ones flourish for us to produce our neurotransmitters. Um, well, they produce the precursors to the neurotransmitters, our vitamin K, they pro it produces fatty acids like butyric fatty acid. So there is a lot of things that that helps us with. So immune system, um, and, you know, I could go on and on, but I won't because there's a, um, a lot of things that our bacteria, viruses and everything works for us. So when you destroy those, that microbiome or the microbiota, when you destroy that, you are destroying your health. You are destroying your immune system. You're destroying your um, ability to turn on good DNA versus turning on bad DNA. So it is really important that we don't destroy it. So when, when I learned about um, glyphosate and realized the patents, and that's P-A-T-E-N-T-S on glyphosate, I realized it's patented as a chelating agent. So it takes minerals out of solution, takes minerals out of your body. It's also a herbicide. And the way it acts is it acts on a, um, a pathway called the shikimate pathway. And this pathway makes the precursors for our neurotransmitters. It's also been patented, and that was done in 2010, as a broad spectrum antibiotic. So every time you consume food that has glyphosate in it, you are consuming an antibiotic, but a broad spectrum antibiotic. So what we're seeing, and like I've been in this field for 40 years, I didn't see this when I first started. We weren't talking about the gut issues we're seeing today. But what I started to see was an in increasing amount of gut issues happening in the human population. And because I'm in Australia, I was seeing it in Australia, but because of many of you saw many of those people were American, English, um, Indian, they're all saying the same thing. A along the population, we are seeing people who have gut issues, whose microbiome is being decimated, whose who's, who's the, the, the viability of the good bacteria being taken over by the bad bacteria. And that's why we are in this crisis right now, is because we don't have the ability to, number one, um, have a good microbiome, but number two, fight off any virus or bacteria or, you know, like listeria and all of these things that are um, we're seeing out in the marketplace that they're scared of and they're sterilizing our food because of it. We don't, we don't have the ability to fight them off. And we're seeing chronic disease, autoimmune diseases, which has everything to do with the gut bacteria. We're seeing depression and anxiety, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorders and eating disorders that all have a link to what is happening in our gut and is and what also is happening with the inflammation in our body so that's just that in a nutshell I could talk for hours on this but that is in a nutshell what is happening and if we don't make a stand as individuals because I'm going to tell you your government isn't doing it my government in Australia they have registered 596 
con um, products containing glyphosate. In, in America, I believe it's 725. In New Zealand, it's 96 because they don't have um, genetically modified foods. So glyphosate is only, it's not just for like Roundup Ready canola, Roundup Ready soya, Roundup Ready um, products. It's also put on foods to dry them just before harvest. So that, what that means is that they might do it on potatoes because they don't want all the riffraff on the top, you know, the sweet potato and the potato. They don't want the riffraff on the top, which is our, the beautiful plant. So they kill it so that they can harvest potatoes easier and sweet potatoes, any or anything that's on under the ground, they can harvest easier. They desiccate our grains, our legumes. So even if it's not Roundup Ready genetically modified foods, it is basically putting on, being put on many pl in plants. And in Australia, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening in the US, but in Australia, it is allowed to be sprayed on, around or near 70 of our foods. Now you think about it, 70, you go into the supermarket with fresh fruits and vegetables, there's not 70 out there. And then all the foods that are made up of it and all the foods that it's in and in the and all the packaged foods and all the additives and all the synthetic biology <laughs> that uses a, a substrate and synthetic biology is genetic modification of microbes in order to make food additives. Um, it's just, it's rife. And unless we stand up as mums, <laughs> <laughs> not moms. <laughs> moms. We, our government's not going to do it. Our authorities aren't going to do it. Food Standards Australia and New Zealand couldn't care less. But in, you know what? In Australia, they they um, they do a supermarket screen for chemicals. There's 144 chemicals on that supermarket screen. Glyphosate isn't on that screen you have to pay extra to get that done. And of course, food companies, if they don't have to do it, why would they do it? So this, sure. is, this is what's happening. You know, you, so brilliant, such great information. Um, you point to in your film, the correlation, because I believe that, you know, I don't necessarily like to dwell in the past. I'm a future thinker, I'm a visionary. However, I also believe that knowledge is power. And there's a history to how all of this came to be because some people don't believe this is happening. Government would do this to us, stores would do this to us. Why would food manufacturers poison us? They don't understand that it's a real thing in some cases. And these beautiful people that you're seeing on this call today, Cindy, are the ones who've accepted voluntarily the charge to go speak into the world on this. And it can be really frustrating sometimes to try to wake someone up with information that could be stark new for them. But you do an excellent job in the film to talk about the history of how all of this came to be. How did we go from once upon a time we had the Garden of Eden to here we are today putting chemicals on food. Can you talk a little bit about that history? Wow, I've learned so much about that even since the film. And um, so I might mm. go over and above what the film talks about. Great. I, I think I'd, I'd like to start with my family because my family was decimated as a result of the chemical revolution. So I'm from, my mum's from Iowa, USA, and um, she's a corn farmer's daughter. And um, she's the oldest of 11 or was the oldest of 11. And um, back then, by 38 and 39, 1938 and 1939. So my mum was born in 37. And in 38 and 39, they sprayed arsenic and lead along 17 states in the US due to a locust plague. So that's where the arsenic is coming from in our food is because that was what was sprayed to get rid of the locust plague. Then by, 19, um, by the mid 1940s, and so my mum would have been exposed to that as would have anybody of that generation would have been exposed to it. Then by 1945 DDT, which is now banned, it was banned in 1972, 73 in the US. It's not banned completely around the world, but it has been banned because it was a hormone disruptor caused all sorts of problems. So DDT was sprayed. So I look at my mom, she was sprayed with arsenic and lead, she was sprayed with DDT and whatever knows what other chemicals were out there. And my mom died young, she died from cancer. My sister um, was born in the US. My mom couldn't eat for the first three months. So of course, 
all her fat cells would have been um, given to my sister. She would have been bathed in DDT and any lead that was, or arsenic that was in my mom's body would have been given to my sister. And she also died young of cancer. I'm lucky I was born in Australia, number one. Number two, my mum had cleaned out because I was born 16 months after my sister. So we'd been sprayed with chemicals and it all started after the Second World War. And when the chemicals that were used in the war times were now being used, you know, they didn't want to quit making their chemicals. So they started to use it on our, our food and, and on swimming pools and on gardens and whatever else was happening out there. By 1975, um, once DDT was finished, and this is all Monsanto, by the way, Bayer now, um, once Monsanto had stopped spraying DDT, they came out with glyphosate. So glyphosate was first seen as a, um, it was invented by a gentleman, I can't remember his name now, back in the 60s. And it was found to clean out your kettle. You know, when your kettle gets too much minerals in it, you'd put it in your kettle and it'd pull out the minerals. So it also was found in big, um, um, factories where they would put this chelating agent into these big vats then they dump it onto nature and they noticed that it killed everything in nature as they dumped it onto it so Monsanto bought it as a herbicide and they patented it as a herbicide and in 1975 you know there were these incredible um, I think they were on Super Bowl advertising, but there'd be a male, you know, standing with guns pointed, ready to kill the dandelion that was on his concrete driveway or pavement. So this is where it all started. And then in 1995 was the beginning of genetically modified foods. And so they made them, they're not for feeding the world. They're not for anything like that. That was just a big fat propaganda. They're there so that they will withstand being sprayed with Roundup without being killed. So they got a bacteria that didn't need um, an enzyme, which is what Roundup or glyphosate kills is this enzyme or just, or stops the, the reaction of this enzyme. They found this bacteria inserted into soya, inserted into canola. So they got a species and inserted it into a plant that shouldn't have had this. And basically, um, soya and canola and then you know corn and all of those foods now are roundup ready so they can spray it five times and it'll never die that's the sad thing is it doesn't matter how they they spray it because they want to get rid of the weeds they spray it before planting they spray it um, after it's been planted if they need to they'll spray it before harvest because of the riffraff of the weeds so um you know this is this is this is Roundup. And now, now we have these incredible cases across the world um, that it has shown that what it is doing is number one, it's cancer forming. So they call it a farmer's cancer. It's called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And many of the farmers now have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but it's not just non-Hodgkin's lymphoma we're seeing. We're seeing neurological problems. We're seeing autism. Look at autism in your country. In one of your states, um, I think it's New Jersey, there is a one in 20 child that has autism. And Stephanie Seneff, who's on my video, like when I went to um, interview her, my jaw was on the floor. I was crying for three hours at listening to her and what she had learnt. And what she was saying was that by the year 2032, and we are projecting that way, especially I saw Jody put up her fingers saying, yes, this is what's happening in my state. You know, we have a one in 20 of our boys and she's saying one in two by the year 2032, if we continue on the trajectory we're continuing on. But seeing all you beautiful people, um, I know we're waking up. I know that there are mothers that are saying, we're not putting up with this. I have seen activists in your country. I, I, there's not many activists in my country, I can tell you that. There's a lovely, beautiful young lady who's had real health issues and she's really doing some amazing things and people are following the lead. Um, but it's, it's, like, it's like knocking on a door and knocking on a door. Like we have the Australian Pesticide and Veterinary Medicine Authority that regulates all of our chemicals. And every two weeks I email them and I say, can you please tell me this? Can you please tell me that? They, they just ignore me now. 
they can't be bothered with me. They just ignore me. They know to ignore my emails. So I think I'm going to um, start going to solicitors and and get, um, um, what do they call it? Freedom of Information Act to find mm -hmm. out the information from them because they don't want to tell you. They mm -hmm. do not want to tell you. Thank you, Stephanie. You know, they're just, they're, we're just peons to them. But we are also really really strong because as me as one person for my family as an individual if I choose not to purchase these products that they are contaminating then I have spoken up and I am not giving them money in their pocket I have a farm guys I don't trust anybody anymore I have a farm I grow my own foods um, if you have a garden, you can grow your own foods. This is a good start to stop buying those foods like Cheerios. I heard Stephanie say Cheerios. Stephanie, you should have been listening to me 30 years ago. You know, I was telling you, <laughs> don't eat that crap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm saying the breakfast cereal is the world. What's that? I heard somebody say something. Anyway, breakfast cereals. They're an excluded breakfast, they're an excluded grain. All it is is upscaling a grain that we we don't need to eat these grains that are covered in Roundup and glyphosate. What we need okay. to do is nourishment. Go ahead, say bacteria. that because I want to switch this next topic for sure. Okay. We don't need to be eating them covered in things, but grain has held an important part of our history mm -hmm. and it is considered valuable. So can you talk to us a little bit about the good parts of grain? Are there a good part about grain? Can yeah, we be yeah. using grain? Should, like, you're right, we don't want the glyphosate. But after watching your film, and for those of you who've watched the film, and I know many of you on this call have, because we've talked, you know that these grains, especially in the US, are grown, how many times, Cindy? Like eight times more than what we need to feed the whole world? Like America alone? is cultivating was, crops yeah it was like if you if you look on the movie um natasha campbell mcbride says that there's only i think it was eight billion people in the world and we feed just wheat alone we feed we could feed 11 billion people and just in america was that correct just our our, our crops worldwide we could feed okay. 11 billion people but we only have eight billion people in the world they're right. over producing the wheat and yeah and this is going into vitamins, pharmaceuticals. It's funny because I walked into a store recently and I thought, huh, the box is made of the glyphosate corn, the plastic bag, the cereal inside. It is saturated 100%. That is a container of glyphosate through and through the whole thing. But then I look down the next aisle and there's, go ahead, say that fed that to Rebecca remember the animals so all right. that beautiful grain in the midwest goes to probably highway five where that huge um feedlot is in the U.S. that is just yes the, all the cows of savagery um that all goes over there and they feed our animals so our animals are filled with glyphosate so what do we so do we eat grain and if so what grain yeah so our traditional grains, you know, we've, um, we were hunter gatherers, we were, um, you know, herders, we were agriculturalists and in, Amer in Australia, the Australian Aboriginal person, people have been agriculturalists for 110,000 years. We bet the Northern Hemisphere by a long shot. They knew how to, to make their own grain and we had kangaroo grass, we had our own oat, our own rice, our own, all of those things. And and basically um, our beautiful old ancient grains, like in, in wheat, we have something called einkorn. It's about 17,000 years old. I know you grow it in the US. Um, emma wheat is about, I think it's around the 15,000 years old. You've got kamut, you've got khorasan, you've got spelt. You have all of these traditional, this is just wheat I'm talking about. Imagine what you have in the oats and the quinoas and the millets. But I want to make sure that everybody, everybody supports the local regenerative farmer, the local organic farmer, the local um, biodynamic farmer, anybody who is making sure that the soil is right and they're not using chemicals in order to grow these beautiful foods. But grain must be cooked 
properly. It must be soaked and it must be cooked or it must be fermented. So it, it has a lot of anti-nutrients in it. And look, let, let's talk about this around Aboriginal people because they were incredible. They were incredible with nature. So we have a, a type of spore or grain called nadu. And nadu has been eaten by the Australian Aboriginal people for 100, probably 100,000 years. It's, it's in our environment. You see it when you go to the middle of Australia, you see a lot of it. They knew through culture and tradition that they had to soak it, had to wash it, had to cook it. Because if they didn't, it would make them sick and they would die. It was an eventual sickness. And it, what it was, was a B1 deficiency. Because we now know that it has an anti-nutrient in it for, a, for, B, for making B1 not absorbed and not utilized. So you have a B1 deficiency. So um, they knew this. They didn't know about B1, but they knew through culture and tradition that's what they had to do. And if we have to go understand that, if we go back to our cultural traditions, we had sourdough breads. We didn't have breakfast cereals. We didn't have bread that was made in an hour. We, our porridges, our groats were soaked overnight. Remember this? And usually in the generations, the grandmother who was in the house next door would create this big pot because this is what I remember, create this big pot of porridge and then the whole family would go and scoop it in and then we'd, we'd have the cow, we'd milk the cow, we'd get the cream off the top, we'd put cream on our porridge and this was tradition. But if you're eating oats and you're eating legumes and you're eating wheat and breads and breakfast cereals and pastas and crackers and chips and, oh, not chips, but crackers, um, what do you call them, biscuits, no, cookies. Um, if you're eating all of this and it's made with these foods, these grains and these legumes, then you're in trouble. But yeah. if you choose to buy them organically, then you'll choose to be part of a solution, not part of the problem. And that's what I know you guys are all about. You're being the solution, not the problem. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We've definitely eaten off the plate of the problem for long enough. I'd like to have um, our field now put in questions. We're going to do as many as we can in this last 15 minutes. And we'll pass to Stephanie a few minutes before the end of the hour um, so that she can close the call. But put put some questions in the chat for Cindy. We're going to go over them. Um, Cindy, we are going to follow up with you, Stephanie and I, to make sure that we get our global watch party for the Million Mom Movement field and, and participating with Purium. I, I'm committed that people see your film. Thank you. And yeah. my entire Purium team has seen your film. I have held watch parties. People on my team have held watch parties. Um, I am so, you know, I, I, I operate from this place of conviction. I know you already know that about me. So your film says so eloquently and perfectly and with much credibility and with eloquence, what every human being on the planet needs to know. So just as I am adamant, that people get biome medic in their hands from Purium to get that glyphosate out, to get your C-reactive protein down, to rehabilitate that microbiota. As much as I am passionate that people get their greens and their alkalizing superfoods in them, I am that passionate about people seeing your film. And I say that publicly and I don't say that mildly because I am very um, mindful of what I give my time and energy and passion and purpose to, but your film matters and people really need to be seeing it. So I am gonna look here. Am I frozen I or are you guys seeing me? Right, Rebecca, about sprouted. Yes, sprouted foods as well. So sprout your legumes and sprout your grains. And Rebecca, I wanna reiterate about the fulvic acid um, that's in your beautiful product. That has been shown to eradicate what's happening with glyphosate. So to me, it's a daily thing we have to take. Um, in order to um, make sure that if we have, because glyphosate's in the rain, it's in our soils, it's, it could be in a small amount, could be in organic foods. We don't know this, at least it's not, because it's everywhere. Um, if you, um, who was I talking to recently? Oh, Don Huber, Dr. Beautiful Don Huber um, out of Purdue University. And he's in his 80s and he's an incredible man. So if you ever get a chance to, I met him after I made my film, otherwise he'd be in my film as well. But he, he talks about that two thirds of the world has been sprayed with glyphosate. 
So we need to be taking our fulvic acids, which is um, in your beautiful product and the greens, because the greens will help you detoxify. So yes, definitely. Yes, absolutely. And just to answer one of the questions is how does organic get contaminated with glyphosate? But you already shared really well about the picture of that. You know, the way glyphosate is applied is in mass. Mm. And, and it's, it's inundating so soil and water tables and the farm next door might not be using it, but I am. And so now it's on your stuff too. Mm. Um, so anything, you know, anything that you can do to buy organic is great. But as we always say, you need a solution too, because even if you've started shopping today organic, and even if that organic was totally pr pristine, you have stored cellularly and imbalanced already your system. So doing the repair work is crucial. Yes. Most Let's talk about your books for a minute. Can we talk about your books? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I, I could talk to you for like five hours today, but we literally have like six minutes. So, um, and, if, and if there are other questions, we'll certainly address them. Um, Christy says, can you please share the trailer link again? Let's get, um, Jody. what's the question that's being duplicated? question is um, when it comes to soaking the grains, the nuts, the lentils, the beans, etc. What's can you talk about the actual physical process of that and what that looks like in a practical setting so that we all understand what that actually means? That would be super So I'm helpful. sprouting on my kitchen counter. How do I do that? Or not even sprouting, but soaking oats overnight or, you know, what needs to be so can you just talk about the process of what that actually looks like sure, or so even offer a resource of where we should look for that information? Oh, it's um, all I do every, like um, of an evening, I will just decide what we're having for breakfast, if it's going to be a grain. And I'll just put a cup of oats in and about three cups of water or a cup of quinoa. I'm a quinoa lover. <laughs> so what I do, I have a slow cooker, by the way. It's great. So I put my quinoa, my oats or anything in the slow cooker, probably as I'm making dinner, so one cup of quinoa I've been putting in. I'll do the quinoa one I've been doing. Four cups of water. Then I, um, I love dates. So I'll cut some dates up and put them in. Cut some mangoes up because we have mangoes here in Australia. I live in Queensland. Um, but they're dried. So I put them in. And um, salt. And I put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in it or lemon juice or lime juice, because that will help activate, that will help get the water into the grain. Then I let it soak and then I put it on overnight, my slow cooker. Um, depending on how low your slow cooker goes, or you could put it in a thermos, which is really exciting. So you could soak it and then um, heat it up, put it in the thermos and let it cook overnight. So then you don't, you know what a thermos is? I've said the right thing, haven't I? Right word, thermos, great. So this is how I do it. So instead of opening up the breakfast cereal box, you pour out the thermos or you open the lid of the slow cooker. So there's no fiddling in the morning. It's all done for you. Does that help you, Jody? Is that what you want? So your salt needs to go in there. Your vinegar or lemon juice, your acid goes in there. I put the dried fruit in there because I like it a little bit sweet and the grain. I, I make it four times the water. So I've got lots of water to soak it all up. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you about that. And let's, uh, let's go to those books because we've got like three minutes. Oh, yeah. um, tell us, tell us the names of the two books so that we can put the link in the chat for our audience. I might just give you Lab to Table because Lab to Table supersedes Changing Habits. So Changing right. Habits, Changing Lives, I wrote in 1998. And I, up, I, I updated it many times. And finally, the food industry got so bad, I've just rewritten the whole thing because I had to update every chapter on it. And I started, you know, back in 1998, I was talking about wheat, but we didn't know. Well, it wasn't being sprayed as far as I knew with Roundup back then. So my book is Lab to Table, How to Stop Being a Lab Rat and Start Making Better Choices for Your Table. And it's on Kindle, it's on Audible, it's, um, you can get it in, um, I think you can get it at the Changing Habits US site, which, Rebecca, I don't know which site that one is. <laughs> All right, we're going to make sure everybody who's listening and wants information on this, I'm going to do a live in the Million Mom uh, Movement official group on Facebook, that, that page there. I'm going to do a live. I'm going to make sure that everybody we reiterate this important information and all the links are dropped there. So Cindy, we'll make sure it's all clear for the audience in our official group for sure. Thank you. I, like I have 20 team members and it's 
uh, it's 4.54 in the morning and none of them are awake, so I can't ask him anything. <laughs> well, and you know, I really want our audience to honor that with you as well. You are in Australia. This is, you know, it's two o'clock Eastern time. We start 11 a.m. Pacific, but you have taken a time to um, be with us and share space with us at a time that's not necessarily convenient for you. So thank you. I know that you do business around the world and your hours are as crazy as they possibly can be. Uh, but your time with us today has been priceless. Um, do you have any final words that you'd like to leave us with today? I just want to make sure that you guys make a ripple of change to create a tsunami of change. Let's get that ripple going, get the tsunami going, and let's get the world waking up. That's what I want to see. And I'm yes. so excited to watch you guys do this. <laughs> Yes, aho, aho and amen. We are all about that. And so Cindy, I can promise you that we'll be asking you back again in the future. And like I said, Stephanie and I will be coordinating with you a watch party for your film and for a larger size audience to come be with you and your knowledge. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that we have been divinely appointed to find one another. So I'm grateful to know you. And I'm grateful to introduce you to this community. And for those of you who've been here today, thank you. You could do anything with a Friday afternoon and you've chosen to do this and you are the activists and the agents of change that we're all waiting for. No one's gonna show up, it's us. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being here and listening and contributing and participating. Um, you know, Cindy, you have uh, many, many experts in your films and, um, mentioned in your books and any of those people are welcome to this stage as well. Their knowledge, their information, every single one of them are welcome. And so I will connect with you more, but there aren't enough things that you can refer our way or advise us this way in the States. There's just not enough. So whatever you have to share with us, we are an open space to receive. You are really a gem on the planet and I'm grateful that you exist as you do. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Million Moms. <laughs> Million moms. Million moms. Oh, that's so great. And, uh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you from the Million Mom movement. And I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie Dawn to close us out this afternoon. Oh, that was Thank just you. amazing. You were one of us and you didn't even know it. Oh, I'm just so grateful for your decades of work and uh, all your writing and that documentary who I'm now going to be sharing so with so many people. And we're going to, I'm, I'm, I'm texting Amy, the founder of Perium. We want to do a screening of your film for the entire field. So, uh, you know, look forward to that, everyone who's still with us. And um, Cindy, if you'd get on Clubhouse, we want to do an MMM roadshow, Rebecca and I, and we would love to bring you on as a speaker on Clubhouse because, you know, we just, we want to, Clubhouse is the new thing over here. I don't know what's going on over in Australia, but it's a new way to connect and network and, you know, get your voices heard. And so that's one way that we can have fun with you as well is, is via Clubhouse. So thank you all for, for being with us. You know, as you can see, Fierce Friday is all about bringing you cutting edge voices, experts, minds, you know, world changers that are here like us to raise our voices and, um, and, and to be heard, you know, to be heard. And there's power in numbers. And so that's why I'm so excited that we found you, Cindy, and that you found us. Because as Rebecca said, this is an alliance that will be lasting for as long as we're here on the planet, because we're not going anywhere as the Million Mom Movement. We're only getting bigger until we are a million fold, right, everyone? That's what we're here to do. So take minimum, off, minimum, yeah, right? minimum of a million, right? Multi-million. So take what you've received here today from Cindy and from Rebecca and from everything that we've shared here today, go out into the world, talk with your friends, talk with your family, go live. If you're a Purium brand partner, the widen your reach promo is happening right now. You get points for going live, go and do that. Raise your voices. We are here to support you. Tag us in your lives. We will come in and give you love underneath in the comments, okay? That's what we're here to do. If you go on Instagram Live, tag the Million Mom Movement. Nayeva can reshare it into her stories, et cetera. 
Let's get active and share, all right? Thank you all so much. So many blessings to all of us for all that we do. We're so grateful. We cannot have this movement without you, all right? Take good care and let's go out and talk to the world about what we know. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.